philosophers who state with confidence that miracles occur all around us every day. And that with a heightened awareness, we'll be able to see these miracles, recognize the angels that walk among us. Each of us views the world through different eyes, varying perspectives. The world of miracles is subject to the same prism of interpretation. I'm Robert Culp, here at the Miracle Research Center for the next hour. We will set aside the preconceived notions we all embraced when we were old enough to distinguish the difference between reality and myth. Ignore the voice of skepticism as we delve into the miraculous and open our minds to the potential. Could it be a miracle? We live in a world that depends upon practical thinking, in a society that bases everyday occurrences on the age-old theory of cause and effect. But what happens when something inexplicable takes place before our eyes? something that occurs without a logical reason. That's what we take into consideration here. Welcome to Could It Be a Miracle? I'm Michelle Wolford, segment producer. And I'm Bob Evans, producer. Though we can only speculate on the causes of such events, we can assure you that the effect of miracles on everyday lives is profound, demonstrated in stories like the ones we present in this show. Coming up, when a teenage girl listens to an inner voice, she keeps her family out of harm's way. When a husband and wife missionary team put their faith to the test, they're granted a medical miracle. An artist's hopes are shattered by a debilitating accident until a prayer brings physical and spiritual healing. An expectant mother's recurring dream gives her a glimpse into the future and begins a lifelong connection with her child. And a lost child is recovered thanks to the warning of an extraordinary hero. Our first case comes to us from best-selling author Joan Wester Anderson. Miracles have been the focus of many of Joan's writings, including her latest publication, Where Wonders Prevail. In a recent interview, Joan shared the personal story of her own brush with the miraculous. One day in the fall, I was out in the back. We had a huge lot, and I was raking leaves. And I thought this was going to be a lot of fun, but after the fifth or sixth bag that you pack with these leaves and you look around and you still have a quarter acre left, uh, it was losing its charm. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Lynn. Beautiful day, isn't it? Gorgeous. Looks like you're taking advantage of it. <laughs> Trying. <laughs> All of a sudden I looked down and my, my rings, my wedding and engagement rings, which had not been off my fingers since my wedding day, were gone.
just at that point, our neighbor, a young family that lived behind us, I had met the wife a couple of weeks before, she stepped through the hedge that separated our properties and she looked across the leaves at me. She could tell that something was wrong. She said, what happened? No. This can't be happening. Is anything wrong, Joan? You look like somebody just let the air out of you. My wedding rings, they're gone. Are you sure you had them on this morning? I never take them off, not even to shower. Those rings mean so much to me, I will never be able to replace them. Well, there's only one thing to do. Search through five bags full of leaves. Let's pray about it. <laughs> Father, Joan is so upset about her rings. I was looking around thinking that maybe some of the neighbors might be looking out their windows and what are they gonna think if they see us kneeling? Didn't you just do this in church? There are millions of leaves all around here, and we know that those rings could be anywhere. We would greatly appreciate your help. And she finished and kind of sat there for a minute, and I thought, well, that was nice. But no way did I think anything was going to happen. And all of a sudden, she got up, and it was almost as if she was sort of feeling her way. She looked around, and then she kind of started walking in one direction, and then she stopped. And she went in another direction. She approached a big pile, a random pile. Lynn? She put her hand down into the pile and she pulled out both my rings. Here they are, Joan. Lynn! <laughs> 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 How did you do that? I don't know. It's just like you told me where to go, like an inner voice. But how? How does that work? You just kind of told me where to look. <laughs> Since that time, I have realized that all of us have this little inner voice. Some people call it intuition, but it's there. And it sort of prods and prompts you. Um, some people call it the second set of eyes. The, the second set sees the spiritual dimension to things. The first set just sees what's going on, lost rings. Some might say that where miracles are concerned, a lost wedding ring ranks low on the priority list. Yes, Joan struggled with that very question. With so much suffering and unanswered prayers in the world, why would such a trivial request be heard? She finally realized that any problem, big or small, is worthy of a miracle. And I understand it was this event that led her to look into other miraculous stories in other people's lives. It is, Bob. This story appeared in her first book, Where Miracles Happen, and it sold millions of copies and encouraged a lot of people to come forward with their own personal stories. By telling her story and sharing the miraculous stories of others, Joan hopes to open our eyes to the miracles which occur all around us. Well, she's a delightful lady, and I have an autographed copy of the book. Coming up, a husband and wife dedicate their lives to missionary work until a crippling illness strikes. When no cure is available, their only hope is a miracle. We'll be right back. Michelle and her crew recently visited with author Kelsey Tyler. Like Joan Wester Anderson, Kelsey began her career as a journalist. She's well acquainted with the basics of good journalism, checking her sources and following through on a story. Now, Kelsey's written books on many different subjects. What led her to write about the miraculous? It was her fascination with angels and miracles. Kelsey's book, It Must Have Been a Miracle, features this account of a missionary couple who overcame medical odds with the power of faith. stories involving angels or miracles where someone had an injury or an illness, perhaps even a birth defect or a, a problem in a bone growth, and they pray about the situation and then miraculously it's gone or it's taken care of or healed. Mail call. Ta-da! I give you next semester's catalog. Man! <laughs> I never thought being a missionary meant we had to take so many courses. Don't worry about it. Look, they just want to make sure that we're prepared for anything while we're in Africa. Oh, look, now that one looks kind of interesting. Healing through prayer. Huh, that's a course. It sure is. And it says that we can take it Wednesday or Thursday night. I don't know, Sherry. I mean, doesn't it seem like people who claim to be healed are just putting on a show? 
Maybe people really have been healed through prayer. Oh, come on. I think we should check it out. And besides, this is one of the courses that they recommend we take. Okay, we'll give it a try. Around that time, Sherry had just been diagnosed a few months before then with severe scoliosis of her spine. And the doctors noted that at the rate her spine was growing and curving, she would probably need to have surgery within a few years on her back and on her spine. I see. You know, yes, of course I understand. Well, we're going to be leaving in about a month. You know, I understand, of course. Well, we're not going to be back for another three or four years. Well, I have to, I have to uh, talk this over with my husband. Of course, thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Don't tell me. Surgery. Yes. The doctor said that my last x-ray showed that the scoliosis has gotten pretty bad. And he spoke to a specialist who said they have to operate on my spine within a year. I really don't want to deal with this. Hey, we'll both deal with it. Maybe I should start sleeping on the floor. Um, I want to try something. What? I want to see if what we learned in that healing class can help. Ralph, the doctor said I need surgery. Hey, it won't hurt to try, right? Come on. You're right. this way she would fall asleep lying on her stomach and he would place his hand over her spine and pray for her Hun, do you feel that you feel something hot moving over your back just your hands running up and down my spine Sarah I'm not rubbing your spine I feel something hot under my hand it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like something hot is moving over your back, but I'm not doing it. Come on, are you serious? Sure, I'm serious. I'm not doing anything. I've got to tell you, Dr. Morgan, my back feels pretty good. In all my years of practice, I've never seen anything quite like this. Has she gotten worse? No. I uh, don't know quite what to make of this. You have no scoliosis in your spine. Your back is completely healed. Years later, after spending time in Africa and praying for many very sick people, they realized that a lot of times, often actually, when you have um, a person who you're praying for and then they're healed, there'll be heat involved. Actually, um, a feeling of heat, the person will feel a warm sensation or a hot sensation, or the person praying for the ill person will feel that heat. And a lot of times that goes in hand in hand with a, a healing like this. I can't help but wonder if a couple dedicates their lives to missionary work, are they somehow more receptive to this kind of healing? 
Who knows how many people dismiss unexplainable events as luck or coincidence without stopping to consider that the voice that guided them or the stranger who helped them was heaven sent. Certainly something to think about. When we come back, a freak injury leaves an artist disabled and breaks her spirit. When doctors offer little hope, she has no choice but to ask for a miracle. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Our next story is from Eileen Freeman, editor of the Angel Watch newsletter. Michelle, I find this story fascinating because it defies all medical reasoning. When I sat down with Eileen, she shared this story of a talented artist whose broken arm just wouldn't heal until a heavenly request was answered. Although it's unusual, God does sometimes send angels to be instruments of actual physical healings. One of the stories that I remember best is the story of a friend of mine. She's an amateur painter and very good at it. How's it coming along? Well, I just turned a major corner. I think it'll be finished by tomorrow. Tell me something. How did a talented woman like you end up with a bum like me, huh? Well, honey, I'm an artist. We gravitate towards bums. <laughs> well, this bum has some menial roofing to do. Actually, I could use your talents for a second. Well, I suppose that I could interrupt my creative flow for a moment or two. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be right out. Shingling is an art form. I'll buy that. Would you hand me those three quarter inch nails, please? Okay. And you may return to your easel. <laughs> Honey, just bring your bucket. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> to ask for the help of angels, ask for your pain to be healed, ask and it shall be yours, knock and it shall be opened. That really? It doesn't hurt. <laughs> 
<laughs> it doesn't hurt. I do not feel any pain. It's impossible. I mean, this morning you were screaming for pain. I didn't take anything, but I think it's healed. Cut the cast off. What? No, 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 no. We're not going to do anything until we see the doctor, okay? Put your arm down. And all of a sudden, she said it was as if warm water had cascaded over her and down her broken arm. Every bit of pain disappeared, and she knew deep in her heart that she had been healed. Perfect. Thank you. Everything had been healed, and her arm was as good as new. So it's rare that a physical healing happens, but it does happen. It's remarkable how a chronic injury, in this case her arm, could instantly show no traces of trauma. There are many cases of spiritual healing that suggest miracles have no time constraints. We have several stories in our files of faith healers and locations that seem to miraculously assist the healing process. This case will be filed with other miraculous occurrences where medical science is used to confirm and document that something took place. Something which begs the question, could it be a miracle? Coming up next, a lost child is rescued with the help of a mysterious animal. Stay tuned for more miracles. and she always comes when I'm sad or I'm in trouble or when something's happening to me when I don't really feel comfortable. She has sparkles around her every time she comes, like in my dreams. And she shows up in my dreams a lot. And she's always right next to my grandma in my dreams. So it's like she's my grandma's best friend. Welcome back to Could It Be a Miracle? Our next story is from Sophie Burnham, author of Angel Letters. Now, Michelle, you interviewed Sophie recently. I understand she's a very interesting lady. She certainly is. She works with playwrights in Washington, D.C. at the Kennedy Center. In addition to her books on the subject of angels, Sophie is the author of some very entertaining and thought-provoking fiction. I'm currently reading The President's Angel, a book that combines her knowledge of Washington and her thoughts on the appearance of angels. During our recent visit, Sophie shared a remarkable true story of a lost little girl who received the help of a very unique dog. The word angel means messenger, so they have to deliver a message. So the question is how to deliver the message in a way that we will be able to receive it. I know the story of a woman who uh, woke up in the middle of the night to, because a dog was barking on the lawn. And this dog would not stop barking. Okay, okay, we heard you the first time. You'd sleep through a hurricane and an earthquake at the same time. Well, I'm going to do something about this. Finally, she got up. She's furious. She's ready to throw the shoes out the window at this animal. And she looks out the window, and she sees in the moonlight a dog barking. Beside the dog is a little baby. And she goes downstairs and finds this child, I say a baby, a baby of two or three, in a nightgown. It's winter time, and this child is just there. What are you doing here? We've got to get you inside. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, she's about three, wearing a red nightgown. My wife heard a dog barking, got up to shoo him away, and the little girl's just standing by the dog. Thank you. Yes, we'll be right here. What did they say? They have a report of a missing little girl which fits her description. An officer's on his way. Did they tell how she happened to end up in our yard? They think she might have come down from the neighbors. Apparently, she walked out of the car while her mom was in the house. Oh, what a cold night for a little girl to be outside. The child belonged to a family who lived on the same block up the road, and they had gotten in their car to go to their grandmother's or something. I'm not sure if they had to go someplace. And the mother had put the baby asleep in the back seat of the car and gone back into the house to get the other children. And when she came out, she had driven away. But the little girl had gotten out of the car and wandered off while she was in the house. So it was only when she was far gone that she realized that she was missing one of her children. <laughs> and then she came back and they had called the police and she had called the police and they put everybody together again. But in that case, the dog was the angel or the angel came in the form of a barking dog. I'm sure other people have the same question I do, Michelle. Did the dog belong to someone? Was it a neighborhood dog off its leash and patrolling? Or can we say with certainty the dog appeared and disappeared miraculously? No one had ever seen the dog before. The parents of the child were certainly grateful for the dog's assistance and tried to locate the dog or an owner without success. Let's not forget how many of our experts insist that angels can take any form necessary to accomplish the task they have set out to accomplish. Up next, another story from the Steiger's book, Amazing Moms in which a young mother has a recurring dream about her unborn daughter, a dream which proves a miraculous bond. We'll be right back. Welcome back. When does the miraculous occur? Our research team has documented many cases where miracles are experienced in our sleep. In my recent interview with Sherry Steiger, author of Amazing Moms, she told me a story of a young mother-to-be and the spiritual vision that came to her in a dream. The reason we wrote the book is because there are so many things that I personally have experienced and that uh, people who've told us stories and uh, some of my counseling where it's just a reality. It doesn't even need to be proven, but I think what we're gaining here is a lot of provable stories that there's an invisible cord between mother and child, some connection that has either rescued, saved, or as you say, comes from another world. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. Rough what is that? Shakespeare and Mozart? <laughs> Beethoven. You think I'm silly, don't you? No, honey. Shakespeare and Mozart. I just want to give our baby a good head start. How about giving it some sleep? Our baby is not an it. I'm sorry, baby. You know what I mean it that way. Here. Feel the baby move. He's been so active. How do you know it's, uh... He's a he. Well, I don't. It's just a feeling. I don't know. I just think it's a boy. Here, feel that right there. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like a little soccer player. <laughs> Could be a rough and tumble little girl, though. <gasps> He's rolling over. I love you. I love you, too. Can I turn that music on? You know, I wish you could feel what I feel. I mean, I'm as close to him as I'll ever be. In a few months, I mean, you and I'll share the responsibility of this new person. But 
Right now, the baby is demanding everything from me. I know. No. I wish you could. I, I talk to the baby all day. I tell him things. <laughs> and some people hear me, and I do feel a little silly. But... Um, I mean, does he hear me? Am I just wasting my time? No, honey. <laughs> I'm sure you're right. He hears you. He knows his mommy loves him. I guess. You just don't stop being you. keep having the same dream. <laughs> Maybe because you keep thinking about it? It's just a dream, honey. Try not to let it bother you. But it doesn't bother me. It makes me feel happy or, or pleased. Of chores. <laughs> Man's work is never done. <laughs> God, where is that girl, Lisa? Hey, Daddy, catch. <laughs> Daddy has two beautiful girls. Come here. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Oh, Daddy. <laughs> Lisa, you look very nice. Are you ready to go? After we get some hugs and kisses. Alrighty, then let's get out of here. Alright, we'll see you later. Future? Can we see the future, or is it connected mainly with moms and their children, that protective thing? But it still touches on a, another little philosophical aspect, you know. Could we see the future, or are things predestined? This story suggests that the dream was a premonition. The two of them appear to have shared the same vision even before the daughter was brought into the world. 
The Steigers, both Brad and Sherry, have continued to compile stories of the miraculous connection between mothers and their children. We devote an upcoming show to our favorite stories from Amazing Moms. Watch your local listings for that special episode of Could It Be a Miracle? Up next, a teenage girl heeds a mysterious warning and saves her family's life. Welcome back. Bob first heard about our final story from Karen Goldman, author of Angel Encounters. That's right, Michelle. Karen welcomed me and my video crew into her Arizona home. I understand Karen is working on a new book. She is. While we were there interrupting her publisher's deadline, Karen told me this story about a teenage girl's undeniable intuition and a change of plans that saved her family's life. A lot of times, a person for no reason that they can determine takes an action that they never would have taken or doesn't take an action that they always take. Amanda? Ready, honey? Just about. We've got an hour before our plane leaves. I doubt that they are going to hold it for us. Oh, Mom, we always make it. Besides, close calls are good for the heart. Gets that adrenaline pumping. Uh-huh. Five minutes, or I'm leaving without you. You wouldn't dare. Ooh, you don't want to find out. Okay, come on, I know you're here. Where are you? Looking for our tickets? There you are. I thought I was going nuts. Am I the only one in this household that has any understanding of the value of preparation? I'm ready, I'm ready. Uh, have you seen my... Uh, Car keys. Thanks. Amanda, we're leaving. I'm starved. Do we have a layover in Boston? 45 minutes to be exact. We'll eat there. Okay. Amanda! I heard you. You look like you're packed for two weeks. Have we extended our weekend? Well, while you two are leaving people and sign over sunsets, I've got to be dressed and keep my eyes open for prospective catches. I get a feeling we're not talking about fishing here. Let's go. <laughs> Now let's go. All right, what's going on? Amanda has just decided that she doesn't want to go. But I thought you were looking forward to the trip, sweetheart. I was until... Until what? Mom, Dad, I have never been so sure about anything in my life. We can't get on that airplane. Okay, fine. If you want to miss out on the trip, I am not going to make you go. But your dad and I have been planning this for a really long time. Those tickets are non-refundable. You know, this shenanigan is costing us a lot of money. Look, I'll pay for the tickets, I promise. Just don't go. I will deal with you when we get home. Are you sure you don't want to go, sweetheart? I'm sure, Dad. Listen, you've got to trust me. You can't go, please. Oh, we'll call you when we get to Boston, OK? Now, I don't know what's going on, but we'll have to talk about it later. We're going to miss this plane, OK? We'll see you later. They talked and talked to her. She didn't have a fear of flying. The whole family was set to go. You know, everything was reserved, everything was booked. They tried everything. She just kept saying, not going. We now have further information on that fabled just airline. Just get to the other flight tomorrow, sweetheart. It's a big deal. Barring any traffic jams or any unforeseen childish tantrums. Can you believe it? We missed a flight by minutes. Amanda? <laughs> Just two minutes after takeoff, flight 35 to Boston went down and exploded on impact. At this time, it's estimated that none of the 147 passengers survived the crash. While the cause of the crash has not yet been determined, firefighters and rescue teams are on the scene. We'll have more on this tragedy as details become available to us. This is Joe Kerr 
reporting live for Channel 4 News. She just did not want to get on that plane. No one could understand why. I don't think she understood herself. The way the circumstances of this story fall together, like pieces of a puzzle, is something our experts refer to as synchronicity. Unlike some of the other cases we've seen, this divine message didn't come in the form of a vision or a voice. It came as a feeling. Staying in touch with your feelings, in tune with a part of your consciousness that isn't cluttered with concerns about everyday life, that is a means our experts suggest as the best way to recognize the miraculous. Our research teams will continue their diligent search for stories of the miraculous from around the country. We invite you to join us again next week when we'll present more stories of ordinary people who have experienced the extraordinary. Then ask yourself the question we ask every week. Could it be a miracle? The rising and setting of the sun, the progression of time, we accept such things as inevitable. Night follows day. Other events are less certain, and yet they continue to happen all around us, as we have presented in the last hour. Whether we acknowledge these events as miraculous is up to us, but nothing should prevent us from asking the question, could it be a miracle?